Hey everybody, today we're going to give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to find the fifth sage here in Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Now the very first thing you need to have done is the A Trip Through History side quest, and I'm going to leave a link down in the description that'll give you a step-by-step -step guide to knock that out super quickly so you can move on to our next step. Now the second step is to make sure that you have the camera. If you already have the camera, you can skip to the next timestamp. If you don't, we'll show you how to get that right now. So you'll want to head over to Lookout Landing. The exact location will be indicated by the yellow dot you see here on your screen and this is where you're going to be able to speak with Robbie. Now Robbie's going to tell you about a chasm that we want to go inside of so finish the dialogue with Robbie and then we'll head over that way. Now the chasm is going to be found just south of Lookout Landing. If you've started the quest you'll have the yellow dot on your screen showing you where to go but we're just going to dive down into the chasm and as soon as you land if you turn around you're going to find this giant seed. We're going to run over and interact with this seed and once you do it's going to light up the area. We'll then turn around and if you look off in the distance, we're going to see a second seed. We want to work our way in that direction while avoiding the lava. You can use this tent here as a basis point to know that you're going in the right direction. Now we're going to speed up the video a little bit so we don't waste too much of your time, but you're not going to have to fight any enemies and you shouldn't run into any lava. Just navigate your way there. And when you get close, you'll have to go up a little ramp and you'll be right there. We're going to go ahead and light up this seed as well. And once you light this one up, we can go right over here behind it and speak with Robbie, who's chilling by the fire. Now, once you speak with Robbie, he'll give you some dialogue and then he's going to give you the camera and we can move on to our next step. Now we're going to head over to the Kakariko village, which is on the southeastern side of the map here, indicated by the yellow dot on your screen. And just south of the ring ruins here, we're going to be able to speak with Paya. If you don't speak with her, this guy over here is going to keep you from getting inside the ruins. So if he's stopping you from going inside, you just need to come speak with Paya. Now, after you speak with Paya, we want to work our way into the ruin up there. So we're going to come over here and climb this ladder. Once we're on this ledge, we can climb the second ladder. And then we're going to come over and climb the wall to the ruin so we can get up top. So we can climb this wall and then we can climb this rock and then we'll be on the edge. On the edge, we can use ascend and ascend our way into the ruin. And once you get inside, we want to pull out our camera app and we're going to take a picture of the text that's on the wall here. Once you grab the image, we can then ascend to the top to get out of here and we can jump back down. This time we're going to speak with Toro, who's going to be standing in the middle and he's going to decipher the text for us and then we'll be able to move on to the next step. Next, we're going to head over to the Poplar Foothill Skyview Tower located here on the southern side of the map. And once you get here, we're just going to work our way down the stairs and here next to the fire, we're going to be able to speak with Callop. Go ahead and speak with Cal through his dialogue and he'll send us on to our next location. Now, after speaking with him, we can head southeast of the Poplar Foothill Skyview Tower. And down here where I've placed this marker is where our next location is going to be. You can take the tower and fly down here and you can use this campfire as a signal as you'll be able to see the smoke from very high up. So you can land right here and this will lead us into our next direction. Now, from the fire, we're going to work our way across the river here and go inside this door with the light. And we're going to speak with Taro, who's just standing here by this cool little riddle. And he's going to give you some dialogue about the riddle and that there's a chest above it. So we're going to work our way up to this chest. We're going to open it up and we're going to get a charged shirt. Once you get that charged shirt, go to your inventory and make sure that you put it on as we're going to need to have all three items on to complete this part. We're then going to jump down and take a left. And all we're going to do here is follow the river. Now for our next door, it's going to be on the right side, so you can cross over to the right at some point and you will find further down the river your second door with the light. We're going to need to break the rock wall that's blocking the entrance. And once doing so, we can go up the stairs and open this chest. And in this chest, we're going to get the charged trousers. But once again, go to your inventory, put those on. And we're going to work our way back down the river. So just continue to follow the path. The next door is going to be on the left side of the river. Um, so, but it will make you jump into the water here to go back to the right as there's a wall there, but right when you get back, you can see the next door is on your left. And for this one, we're going to need a blade as we're going to cut down these vines. And once you cut down the vines, we can go inside once again, work our way up the stairs. And this is going to be our final chest with the charged headdress. So now that you've got all three, make sure you have all three on. And we're going to continue to follow the river. I would recommend taking a left right here and climbing up the rocks and following the river from up top as it is raining and it's going to be annoying trying to climb everything, working your way down. But once you get down to the very end of the river, you guys are going to see another door off in the distance. We're going to work our way over to that door and inside of this room is going to be a little altar instead of a chest. And what we're going to do is place a Zonai charge on it. So we'll go to our inventory, select a Zonai charge and hold it. And then we're just going to place it right here. And once you do, that's going to trigger a cutscene where it removes all the stormy clouds from the sky. 
And then after that cutscene, you're gonna get some dialogue with Toro and you'll be ready to move on to the next step. Now we're gonna fast travel back over to the Poplar Foothill Skyview Tower. And once you get here, we're gonna launch ourselves into the sky. Now I'd recommend removing your weapons so you don't get struck by lightning while you're up here, but we're gonna fly over here to these islands. Now this first island here, if you've got decent stamina, you'll be able to make it to the top. If not, you can land on the bottom and use Ascend to get up. But we're gonna land on the top here and we'll run all the way over to the other side, get our stamina back, and we're gonna fly all the way back to the end of the islands where we can use Ascend to go up to the next section. So we'll go ahead and use Ascend here. We'll work our way up to the top. And once you're up top, we're just gonna come right over here to this little machine. Now you can stand on this and wait for lightning to strike and it will launch you across to the other side. You can also use shock fruit. There's a couple different things that you can do to get across. I almost fell, so be careful while doing this. Make sure you're standing high enough to launch yourself up top here. But once you get up top, we're gonna to jump over here and climb up this little broken bridge area. We're then gonna build a little makeshift bridge. So we've got some wooden planks over here. We're gonna take one, rotate it and attach it to the other. And there'll be a spot right here behind us where we can pick it up and drop it on this ledge and it'll land perfectly and we can run up. Now there's going to be an enemy up here. You don't need to fight him. We're just going to stay away from him and work our way around the back. You can fight him if you want. We'll go up these stairs here. We'll be able to jump off and we're just going to fly to the other set of stairs that are in the back. And once you go up these stairs, we're going to work on making a makeshift minecart. So we're going to take the smaller piece of wood over here and we're going to rotate it and essentially make a T. So you'll see the way that I rotate this. We're going to stick it up and then turn it sideways here and attach it to the middle. And then you can pick this up and take this over to the rail and turn it upside down. And then you can just drop it on there and you've got yourself a minecart. The last thing we need is to come over here and grab a fan. And we'll rotate that facing backwards, attach it to the back. And then we can pull out a weapon really quick to hit this fan to get it going. And then I would recommend immediately putting your weapon away as you don't want to get struck by lightning while you're on this minecart. So we'll take this all the way to the back. You can turn the fan off if you want. And we're going to come right over here and use Ascend to get up to the next level. So we'll go ahead and use Ascend. And when we get to the top, we're going to have a chest right here. Now this isn't crucial. You don't need to get this, but if you want to, you can just come over here in the water and get on this block. And even though it's slippery, if you jump up and then jump immediately, you'll be able to get up top, even though it's raining and get the shock emitter out of there. And then we're just going to jump off to the left and fly down to this next railing. And we're going to make another mine cart. So fortunately, we already have the T-shape built down here. This will be like this for you. So you don't have to build it. You can just pick this up and put it in place. And all we need to do is attach the fan to the back, which we can get right over here to the left. Now, this is a little tricky. We're going to be using Ascend about halfway down the path. You guys can kind of see where we're going to go up right there. So what you want to do when you get on this minecart is once you get fairly close, go ahead and pull out Ascend and then just start spamming it when you get underneath because it'll be a little glitchy. It won't go the first time. So you'll kind of see here right when we get up on it, I'll go ahead and pull out Ascend. And right here, I just started spamming it. And unfortunately, I was able to get it. If not, you can just turn around and uh, and try it the other direction. But once you use Ascend, you're going to be up here at the shrine. Now, if you want to complete this shrine on your own, you can. If not, I'll leave a link down in the description below that'll show you how to get through this super fast and super easy. And once you complete that, we can move on. Now, once you've completed the shrine, we're going to turn around and run up the stairs behind us. And up here on this ledge, we're going to be able to use Ascend to get back up top. We'll go ahead and ride this to the top. Once we're up here, we can jump across, even though it's slippery. If you climb up a little bit and jump, you can make it. If not, just go inside and use Ascend. Either or, you'll make it up here. And we want to rotate this thing to where the little jump pad is going to face in the direction we want to go to. So you'll see here, I kind of miss it on the first try. But you want to turn it to go over there where the entrance is. So we'll turn it just a little bit more. And then you can see we're pretty much lined up to go across. You can either wait for the lightning, and I got a little impatient, so I just decided to use some shock fruit. You can toss it to a little egg and fly across and you want to pull your chute immediately and fly past the railing here. You can make a mine cart, but we're going to save time and just fly across. And we're just going to go back over here on this ledge. We'll go past the enemies and we can drop down into this little section here. And if you run to the very end, we're going to be able to use the send back here. So we'll go ahead and use the send to get us on the very top. And once we're back here, we can come over to this ledge and use the send once again. And now all we got to do is fly across and wait for lightning. So we can just stand on this thing. You can use shock fruit. For me, the lightning was already coming, so I just decided to wait. It'll launch us up top. We can pull our chute, and we'll have a chest here we can open up. 
And once you grab the chest, all we have to do is follow the path all the way around the back. And you guys will notice that right over here on the ledge is going to be a spot where we can jump. And that's going to jump straight down to your next shrine. Now, this one's super easy. You don't need a tutorial for this as it's just a Raru's Blessing Shrine. So you can just go inside, open up the chest and make it to the finish and then we can move on now for this next part you're going to need to have 10 total hearts to open up a door that's behind us right here in front of the shrine it's a good stopping point if you don't already have 10 hearts because you can go do some more shrines acquire those hearts and then fast travel to the shrine that we just did so that you don't have to go through the whole process again so make sure you have 10 hearts you can turn around open the two giant doors that are behind us and when the doors open you're going to have a mask inside when you interact with that mask, you're gonna get in a crazy elaborate cutscene, and then we'll be able to move on with the mask part. Now, once the cutscene ends, we're gonna pick up the mask off the table here, and we're gonna carry it down here to the ledge, and we're gonna attach it to one of these gliders. So we can put it on the front. We'll go over here and grab a fan and attach a fan to the back and set it up to where we can launch ourselves off the ledge. And as you can see, all we're doing is following the green laser. So that's where we wanna take this mask. So we'll fly this all the way down to the ground here. I accidentally fell off, but it's not that big of a deal. You'll most likely crash it anyways. But once it crashes, we're just gonna go up top to where it's at. We're gonna separate the mask from the glider and we're gonna bring the mask over here where the laser's coming from and sit it on the top. That's gonna cue a cutscene where we're gonna have this giant entrance appear from underground. And once it does, so we can carry the mask underneath and we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna put the mask down right here It'll trigger another cutscene, and we're going to ride this giant elevator underground. Now, once you get off the elevator, it's going to allow you to pick it up again. And we're going to come right over here and place it at its final destination. And now all we have to do is gather the arms and the legs for our robot here. Now, once the cutscene ends, we're going to run right over here to the right side. And I put down a lot of bright bloom seeds so that you can see when you're doing this for the first time, it'll most likely be dark. But we're going to work our way up this dragon skeleton here. And once you get to the top, you'll see this giant seed. You can climb this wall or run around the back, either or. And we're going to activate this so there's a little more light and we can see the map. And then we're going to run over here to the side where we have this bridge. And we're just going to use this to jump off of. So we'll go to the edge of the bridge here. And you guys can see we can jump right over here to the entrance. And this is going to be for the right leg. So we're going to run inside. We'll be able to activate it. And once you do, it's going to drop the right leg into a box. And then we're gonna get that box out of here. So we're gonna have to put this on an elevator to our right. So we'll go ahead and pick that up, drag it over here and put it on the elevator. We'll then smack the fans and it'll take us up to the next level. Once we get off, we're gonna pull off the right leg as well as one of the fans as we're gonna use it to make this thing move a little bit further. Make sure that you turn the fan off or that will happen. But what we're gonna do is take this right leg and attach it to the right side of this hook. And the reason for that is when you put it on the right side, it's gonna pull the hook down and leave the opening there. So it'll actually make it up the rail since there's a little blockade right there on the left. We'll then attach the fan to the back and you can jump up and smack the fan and that thing will be on its way. Now we just need to get up there. So we'll run to the back over here where we can use a send and that's gonna take us right up to where we need to be. So we'll jump up. You guys will turn around, we'll see the fan coming. And once it gets off, all we need to do is separate the right leg from our fan and our hangy thing here. So we'll take everything apart, take the hook off, and uh, and we'll put it on this elevator. So we'll come drop it on this elevator. We're going to do the same thing. Jump on, smack the fan. Except this time, we don't need to take one of the fans. We just need to take the right leg off. So when we get to the top here, you just use Ultra Hand. And we're actually going to put this thing on a glider. So we'll drop it here in the middle. The gliders are going to be right here on your right. And we're going to climb up on the wall. They're going to be higher than where the fans are. When you get on this little second level, you'll find them. And we're just going to grab one and toss it off the edge. And what we're going to do is put this right leg on the middle with a couple fans on the back side. We're just making a little airplane here. One thing that's important is make sure that this is balanced as best as you can make it. You want this centered as best as possible because you don't want your plane just veering off in a random direction. And I'm using two of these fans. You might be able to get away with one, but I wanted to be extra safe here. So I just put one on each side. We'll attach those to the back and then we moved it up a little bit closer just so we can make sure this thing went straight off the ledge. And once you drop it down, we can hop on top of the box. We'll hit the fans and this thing will start running. Now, what I did is I just crash landed this into the top of the building so it didn't go too far. You can see pretty much directly below us is where we want to attach it. So I just crashed it on the roof and then, then I was able to just separate the right leg here and then drop it off the roof and then jump down with it. 
Now, once you get down here, all you got to do is destroy it. So just whack this thing several times. It's really interesting. I hit it a bunch and then it ended up breaking when I jumped into it. <laughs> so, so just break it. And once you do, you can then use ultra hand to pick up the leg and then you can rotate it into place. This is the right leg. So we'll just attach that here and you'll get another little cut scene really quick and then we'll be off to get our next three. Now to get your second leg, we're just going to turn around and head backwards. You guys can see here on the right, we have another giant seed that you can activate for more light if you haven't already. But we're just going to work our way into the left leg depot. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to come over here and activate it. It'll drop the leg out of the top. And then we're going to use ultra hand and pick this thing up and put it on a little elevator with some rockets. However, when you're putting it on this elevator, make sure you don't attach it. Just drop it. That way, when we smack the rockets here, we're obviously going to get launched up, but the leg is also going to get launched up. So now that you've gotten it up top, we're going to rotate this thing and put it on what we're going to launch it from. So right now it's straight up so we can just hang it straight up and just sit it there. And then we're going to rotate this thing counterclockwise. I started the wrong way and realized it, but you want to go counterclockwise and we're going to angle this thing so we can launch it up to the second floor. So angle it just a little bit, doesn't have to be too crazy. And then we can come over here and grab a rocket and we're just going to rotate it with the same angle and attach it. And once you do that, you can go smack the rocket and it's going to launch our leg to the top. And all we need to do is run over here to this little opening and we're going to use the send to get up top. And once we get up top, it's easy. We're actually really close to where we need to take it. So we'll run over here and use ultra hand to pick it up. We'll carry it outside here. We can just drop it off the ledge and jump down with it. And then we'll pick it up and carry it right back over here to the machine. And we'll drop it and break the case open. This one was much easier. And then you can put this into place and now you've got both legs and we need to go get both arms. Now the next piece we're gonna grab is the right arm. And to get that, we're gonna turn around and head south again, except this time we're gonna go to the right of the giant seed. We'll work our way up this giant bone and into our next room. We can come over here and activate it. And once we do, what we're gonna do is turn around and we're gonna lift this door and hold this for about 10 seconds. And once we're done holding it for a few seconds, we can drop it and use recall. And that's going to keep the door open so that we can take the arm outside. So we'll drag this through the door. Then what we're going to do is turn around and take the two tires that are stuck on the door. And we're going to use these to make a car. So we'll bring the leg or the arm over here rather and put it into place. You want to make sure that the arrows on the tires are pointing in the right direction. So have them pointing in the direction we're going across the lava. Go ahead and rotate this one. And then all we're going to do is put the little stick on the top. And once that's attached, we can then jump up on the car, start it, and ride our way across. We'll ride our way across. We'll take a right and come over here into this next room. Now, once you're in here, we kind of need to redo our car so it'll fit. So we're going to separate everything, and we're going to rotate this a few times. You can see I messed this up the first time trying to remember what, where to rotate it. But you want it to look just like this. And then we can put the tires back on the side. And after you get the tires on, we want to put the stick back on top. And we're going to move this extra tire out of the way because this is going to be blocking our tires. And then we can push this up into place. Now, you'll see that originally I didn't put this up far enough because I try to start it and it doesn't go. You want to make sure that you sneak it in between right here, just like this. That way, when you start it, it'll make it across. And once you get across, you can separate everything. The only thing we're going to keep is the stick. So we'll place this back down. We're going to put the stick on the top. And instead of a car, we're now going to make a boat. So we'll go ahead and use Ultra Hand again, lift this door up for a few seconds, drop it and use Recall so it stays open. We'll then drag it through. And all we need for a boat is a fan. So we're going to go put this on the ledge here just to get it out of the way. We've got a fan running behind us. So we'll pull this out and we're going to turn it off so we don't waste all of our battery. And then we're just going to use Ultra Hand to attach it to the back. And once it's attached, we can then push this thing into the water, jump on board and get going. Now, I will say this first little ramp here, there's a really good chance you're going to get stuck. This happens a lot where you kind of just run into the wall and then you're sideways. All you need to do is jump off, grab on the, onto the ledge and then pick it up and reset it. You can jump back on and start it again and you're good to go. But all you're going to do is follow this all the way down the river. You pretty much did the hard part. Just ride it all the way to the bottom. We'll hop off, separate it from everything and drag it right over here to the machine break it open and put it into place. Now we only have one piece left. Okay, so to get our last arm, we're gonna work our way to the left. We're gonna go across the bridge where we just came across the water. I would recommend staying on the right side of the bridge. There's a little bit less lava that you have to deal with. And we're just gonna follow the staircase all the way up to the top here. And this will be our final room. 
The first thing's pretty simple. All we're gonna do when the arm drops down is we're gonna grab it and put it on this lift. Now you guys can see that I somehow managed to mess this up and I got mad. So I just grabbed it with ultra hand and carried it up the lift. <laughs> but once you get to the top, all we need to do is angle it sideways so that we can sit it on this little electric barrier. You'll see you wanna angle it just like this and it'll sit in place. And then we're gonna grab a wheel. And if you rotate the wheel straight, we can just attach it to the side. You see, we'll make it straight. We'll attach it to the side here. And when you attach it, it'll just drive it across, which is super nice. And now all we have to do is fly to the ladder. Now, once we get over here, we're going to separate this. And I'll tell you, all you need to do is add two wheels and a stick and drive this thing down the hill and you're done. The two wheels are behind you and the stick is going to be to your right over here in the darkness. I decided to go a little above and beyond because I got bored. Um, so <laughs> we put the two on here. So we've got two wheels and then we'll grab the stick that's over here in the darkness. And I'm not going to show you guys me building this tank. So we'll just kind of skip right here to where we drive it down. the hill. <laughs> I decided to put eight wheels on for no reason. You only need two, but uh, you can head down the hill here. I would recommend shooting those guys out of the way. They may stop your vehicle, which makes it more annoying because then you have to fight them. So take them out if you can. And then all we got to do is hop off add our last piece into place and then you're going to get a, a nice little cutscene, and then we can move on to the next section all right so once the cutscene ends we can hop in our machine and we're going to take a left and work our way down this hill to where you guys see those lights we don't actually need to fight any of these enemies if you just kind of walk around them they won't be able to hit you and we can make it up top where we can grab some attachments i only grabbed a fan here you can pretty much put whatever you want on this thing but i'm going to put a fan on my back so i can move quicker and avoid getting hit you guys will notice that I have it there. I can just keep spamming it and getting past them quickly. And we're just going to work down the hill to our next section where we can get some more attachments. One thing that I learned while doing this, it's really useful is using a bunch of Zoni charges to refuel your battery when it runs out so that you can keep hitting that fan and getting away. So if you have a lot of Zoni charges, definitely do that. After you hit that, we're going to take a right, just go up the hill. You'll be able to see the giant seed from there. So just work your way toward the giant seed. You can go through the lava in this machine. And once you get up here, there's a couple spots where you're not able to climb up. If you can't get up in the machine, you can just hop out and jump up. But all we're going to do is activate this so we can have more light and we're almost to the finish. Now, once you turn that light on, we're going to hop back in our machine and we're going to work our way up the hill. Now, you don't actually need to fight this guy. We can just blow by him. But I decided to hit him with a rocket just to see how much damage it would do and decided it wasn't worth the time. So I just went right past him and we're going to go to our final little spot here where we have some items. You're going to have two uh, cannons and two of the spike balls and we're going to use all four of them to break rocks over here. So if you come back in this corner, you're going to see a ton of rocks and all we're going to do is slowly break them all down. I'm using the first spike ball now when it breaks, I turn around and I go back and grab another one. Um, and then I do the same with the cannons and using all four, you'll be able to break through to the other side. Now you can jump out and attach a rock to one of your weapons and just do it that way. However, there is lava all over the ground, so it would be kind of risky to try it that way. I would recommend just staying in the machine and using all four of the abilities back there. But uh, we'll go ahead and skip past breaking all these rocks so you don't have to watch this for a minute. So here you'll see that I break it through to the other side and we're just going to work our way down this hill to our final spot where we can grab items before we get to the fifth stage. You can fight these guys if you want to. You don't need to. They were just kind of annoying me. So I started hitting them with some rockets. Um, but we're going to come over here. And the only thing you need that's super important is you need to grab one of these rockets on the ground. You want to put it on your back. And once you put it on your back, we're going to come over here where the bridge is broken. We'll get as close to the edge as we can. And as soon as we do, we're going to use that rocket ability and it's going to shoot us all the way up to the top. And boom, you made it. The fifth sage, a.k.a. the spirit temple. Um, but yeah, this is how you do it. Um, if you guys have any other questions on how to get this done, make sure to leave them down in the comment section below. And we'll see you guys in the next video.